Kia tangi no mai te kihi kihi ponamu. Ko manawatu te manawarahi. Manawatu te kai fakamaru. Kia raro iho i ona mata kia naringa o o ko matua. No re reira ko Rachel toko ingoa. Ko te pohoaki o te puna mataranga o Aotearoa. No te papa oia aho. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today at this first fully virtual NDF conference. I'd like to make a final acknowledgement to the conference organising committee who have navigated planning and implementing this conference under constantly changing circumstances. Thank you for your perseverance. It's wonderful that NDF has gone ahead despite the challenges. I'd also like to acknowledge that it was 11 years ago yesterday that the Christchurch earthquake struck. I know many of us know people who were greatly impacted by those events over a decade ago. And as memory institutions, we don't and can't forget events like the Christchurch quakes. Originally, I was planning to close this conference in a live session with my reflections on the themes and referencing the inspiring and insightful presentations that I had attended. Instead, I'm pre-recording this presentation and making some assumptions that we've been inspired online rather than in person. I confess I'm recording this rather last minute against a background of unease that over two weeks of protests on the doorstep of the National Library have brought to many of us working here. In this closing session, I'm going to cover the strategic directions of the National Library and how those are evolving in our current context and what I think are the important directions for the future of the GLAM sector. I'm going to start my presentation by highlighting the te reo name for the National Librarian, Te Pauhoaki. The name was gifted by the Library's Māori Advisory Group, Komiti Māori, and is based on the Pepeha and Waiata written by Fire Bella Tarafiti for Tupuna Mataranga o Aotearoa. Kokiri, 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 whakaranga akeo, kina reo o te motu, e karanga mai ana, huakina, mai na tato o tofari. The message from the people clearly asks us to open our doors so we may work together and share the information held in Tupuna Mataranga o Aotearoa. It's a unique and original compound word that's both descriptive and aspirational. And in preparing for this talk today and reflecting on the vision of NDF to be a world leading digital cultural community for the benefit of Aotearoa, it seems to me that my role and that of Tapuna Mataranga o Aotearoa have the potential to play an important part in supporting the values of the NDF community. Those values are to be bold, inspiring and future focused, to put people first and be enabling, supportive and collaborative, to uphold the principles of te tiriti o Waitangi and to be inclusive and honouring of Aotearoa's cultures and communities and also to be sustainably orientated. Before I explore how we might do that, I'm going to take a moment to reflect on where we are now. And I hope I'm not repeating too much of what you've already heard over the past two days. Two years ago, we hadn't heard of COVID-19. We didn't use QR codes to scan into everywhere we visited. We didn't wear face coverings and we hadn't experienced nationwide lockdowns. International travel was possible without needing to isolate on return, and very few of us had experienced having to close our institutions completely. And how many of us were using Zoom or Teams constantly? Our world has changed. Through all of this, our organisations and kaimahi have adapted, innovated, and kept delivering services and supporting our communities. 
The importance of our wider sector has been recognised by the government through COVID recovery funding. And libraries, and in particular public libraries, were allocated nearly $60 million to enable the sector to keep delivering services and supporting communities. Through the Libraries Partnership Programme, administered by the National Library, the sector's been able to hire additional staff to work in areas such as community engagement and digital inclusion. We've also invested in partnership grants to strengthen professional development and to encourage collaboration across our sector and our membership organisations. The legislative purpose of Te Puna Mataronga or Aotearoa is, and I'm paraphrasing a bit here, to enrich the cultural and economic life of New Zealand by collecting and preserving and protecting documents relating to New Zealand and the Pacific. We also are legislatively mandated to supplement and further the work of other libraries in New Zealand and to work collaboratively with other institutions having a similar purpose. And to give effect to that, we have our strategic directions. We're committed to removing barriers to sharing knowledge and ideas to increase innovation, solve real world problems and generate economic value. We're also committed to improving literacy, to boost social participation and provide skills to work in a high productivity economy. And we'll continue to contribute to addressing issues related to social cohesion and discrimination. That last aspiration seems more important than ever at present, with the unprecedented scenes of protest happening right now across the Motu. It demonstrates that the impact of lack of social cohesion is a serious impact. We've observed further impacts of COVID, such as the increasing reliance on digital. So much more of our life has moved online, shopping, social connections, and that reliance on digital infrastructure and connectivity becomes more important than ever. We've seen financial and social strain and, and the impact that that's had on mental health. We know that COVID has widened the digital divide and that digital inequity can lead to people not having easy access to trustworthy information. So how is the National Library responding to this changed context? We're focusing increasing on increasing access to our physical collections through digitisation and ensuring that our collections are in digital forms and accessible for new modes of research. We're looking to resolve the challenges of collecting social media platforms, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, etc. Each have their own unique challenges. Our current legislation doesn't provide the mandate to collect these platforms where many New Zealanders act out a lot of their lives. And a really relevant example is when we tried to collect the Student Army Facebook page um, that did so much after the Christchurch earthquakes. The current legislation for Facebook or terms of reference for Facebook required that we had permission from every single member of that group, uh, which was an impossible task. Uh, simultaneously, that increasing digital world, including social media, um, provide greater flexibility as we endeavour to extend our collecting areas across more diverse communities. Digital collections can form the basis of digital humanities projects, and there's a wide opportunity here to connect with communities through those digital humanities projects. Our current Books and Māori project will result in approximately 1,500 items in te reo being available for full text searching. The next step is how to make that accessible as data to the digital humanities community. 
We have a lot of questions and we're looking to the wider sector for answers. How do we contribute to big data analysis in the digital humanities? We have 10 years of data from the .nz domain harvest. We have all the papers past data, Twitter data sets. How do we support text mining and other forms of computational analysis? How do we build and maintain long-term support structures for digital humanities services in New Zealand? including leveraging our current mandate and expertise to protect and preserve digital assets. How do we leverage librarians' information management skills, rights management into digital humanities projects? How do we fully engage in the digital research process? Are we just providers of content or do we have a deeper role to play which ties in directly with our strategic directions and the notion of a national knowledge system? We're developing virtual reading rooms for researchers. We're delivering open data sets and dabbling with digital humanities tools and projects and we know we need to develop coherent policy framework for incorporating rights, privacy, terms of use, takedown. And we're working more collaboratively than ever before. National Library, Archives and Nga Taonga are working towards a shared blueprint for operating together in shared physical spaces. And collaboration is already happening in the form of projects like Utaina, the digital AV preservation project. And what's our responsibility to our communities? How do we work in different ways to bring them closer and ensure they have the skills they need to access the information and resources of value to them? We'll continue to open our doors physically when we can and virtually when we can't. And we'll continue to bring what we've learned from operating in a virtual world into everything we do. The Honourable David Clark, Minister for Digital Economy and Communications, is developing a digital strategy for Aotearoa. The strategy will set out the government's goals, priorities and activities for the next two to five years, along with longer term results out to 2031 and beyond. The vision for the strategy is enabling all of Aotearoa New Zealand to flourish and prosper in a digital world. I believe that our sector is already helping to deliver that vision and we're well placed to do more. To do that, we need to continue to develop capability to work with iwi Māori to design services with rather than for, to challenge ourselves to share power and truly work to honour tatiriti. We need to make courageous choices that will require discomfort. We can do that because we've been working towards this for some time. As Anna Fifield said in her session yesterday, we need to keep listening to those who disagree with us. I've had quite a bit of practice at that recently, but the overseas published collections are a topic for another day. The protests happening at the moment remind us of that and of our responsibility to collect and make accessible in a responsible way all sides of a story. If we don't make something accessible, and there can be good reasons for that, we need to be transparent about those reasons. If we can't be transparent, then we won't build trust. There's a risk that when times are challenging, we withdraw, hunker down and talk to ourselves. I believe that we need to do what's counterintuitive and reach out instead of withdrawing. We need to work together and continue to build relationships and trust. The NDF values provide a useful touchstone to guide our organisations in times like this. We should be asking ourselves, are we being bold, inspiring and future focused? Are we putting people first? being enabling, supportive and collaboration oriented? Are we upholding the principles of te tiriti o waitangi and being inclusive and honouring Aotearoa's cultures and communities? And are we sustainable? My message to finish is that although we're currently in a really difficult time, there are always challenges. And although it's tempting 
we shouldn't use these challenges as reasons not to change and make progress. As I referenced right at the beginning of this session, 11 years ago here in Aotearoa, we were dealing with the aftermath of a devastating earthquake. And today we are dealing with a global pandemic and ongoing protests. There are always challenges. And for every situation, there are amazing, dedicated people working in our sector, striving to find ways to continue to collect sensitively and appropriately, to protect collections, provide access and services, and support their communities. Demonstrating over and over, he aha te mea nui o te ao, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. The Glammy sector will survive and will continue to improve lives and aren't we fortunate to be part of that future. Noho ora mai, namihi nui.